Thank you for joining. So uh, for the next uh, 55 or so minutes, uh, we're going to talk about the new uh, Smart Equip website that we've been working on the past two years. So most of you on the call probably have used or are using um, CapEx, uh, GMK CapEx, um, GTL, NPE, and or View Center. These are applications that um, are specific, specific to different products, right? So whether it's Grove or National or, or Managed Fault Crawlers or what have you, there's uh, parts and service information in those applications that I'm sure you interact with on a, on a daily basis. Um, GPX2 is actually also part of this deployment, uh, but this, uh, the ordering part of the project um, won't be completed until probably late March or early April. So what I'll be showing you today is the um, the content or the parts and service content um, side of the project that is is currently ready. So, <laughs> if you, um, I'm going to mute all again, just one last time. If uh, if you log into Manage Walk Direct today, um, you should see the Smart Equip link in your application list. If it is not there. Um, just be patient. We're slowly adding, like I said, around 5,000 global people into the appropriate group so that Smart Equip shows up in your applic application list. If it is there, feel free to follow along with what I'm going to show you. Um, but you do not have to request access. You do not have to request access. The access will be granted to you if it hasn't already been so. So. With that, I'm going to bounce over to the Smart Equip site. This is uh, what the home page looks like. From the home page, you have um, a couple interesting navigation uh, links. Down here on the bottom, you can navigate to the product that you're interested in, or you can simply click on Manage Walk Cranes here on the left side, which will then take you to the brands as well. Either one will take you to the same location. I'll navigate through all of these individually and show you what they look like shortly. Uh, you also have at the top of the page, you can search by serial number, you can search by model number, or you can search by part number or text. I'll show you how that works as well. In addition to uh, this search function, you can add items by part number into your shopping cart. I'll show you how to do that. This is where your shopping cart uh, link is located. And under the tools section of the site, there is a help menu. This help menu will open up in a new window. And this help menu has essentially instructions on how to find things, on how to interact with the shopping cart. Uh, basically everything I'm gonna show you in this uh, training today can be found in this help document. So if after the training session, if you forget how to get to carts or how to interact with carts, simply open up the um, open up this tools and go to help and that'll open this document and these links are active. So you can go to the table of contents. If you're interested in carts, click on carts. That'll take you immediately to the section of the document that talks about carts. So with that, People are still coming in, by the way. That's why I'm moving back and forth with my mouse. Um, with that, let's uh, let's talk about um, finding parts and service information. So I'm going to start with uh, Grove, um, but each of these links works the same way. So when I click on the Grove brand, um, the first thing you'll notice over here on the left-hand side is you'll notice a list of product types. Um, these product types are organized um, very similar to what you saw in GTL. If you had access to GTL previously, um, this is very similar structure uh, to what you saw in, in GTL. Um, so if you're interested in, in finding a GRT, if you're interested in, interested in finding a GRT model or serial number, uh, you simply click on the GRT product type. You'll th you're then presented with a list of specific GRT models. Uh, you click on the GRT model you're interested in, and that's where you'll see a list of serial numbers. Um, if I go back up, I can navigate back up with this arrow. I can also navigate with this, what's called a breadcrumb trail here. 
So if I want to go back up to the manage while crane layer, um, I can simply go up and click on a different brand. And I'll see a different list of product types. I'm no longer seeing RTs and GMKs. Now I'm seeing specific crawler crane product types. If I click on crawler, I'll see all the crawler models. And then under each of those models, you'll then find a specific list of crawler crane serial numbers. So navigation is very simple in terms of finding what you're looking for simply by navigating on the left hand side over here and clicking into the specific brands. All brands have been loaded, all models and serials, serial numbers have been loaded except for Paton Tower Cranes. Paton Tower Cranes will still remain in GTL, um, but every other product brand and every other model and serial number, about 160,000 serial numbers in fact, have been loaded into the Smart Equip system. Now, CapEx, GMK CapEx, um, NPE, GTL, View Center, these applications will remain in your application list under Manage Walk Direct for a few months just to give everybody adequate time to transition over to uh, use Smart, the SmartEquip site. But after a few months, these sites will go away and you will use the SmartEquip site exclusively. Keep in mind, too, that every new crane that's built um, the new crane parts information is being pushed automatically to Smart Equip and no longer being pushed to these older legacy systems. So if you're looking for something in the old system, uh, it's very possible that CapEx might not have it anymore because we're directing all uh, parts information into Smart Equip now. So uh, one thing I wanted to show you as well um, that came up yesterday in a question, uh, if you scroll down towards the bottom of this page under news and information, if there is a serial number that you're searching for that you cannot find, um, you can report that by clicking on this link here. And on this page, you're presented with a list of um, email addresses as soon as it loads up. So if you're looking for a GMK serial number that's missing, you would click on this email address and that'll open up in your email client. You can email that person and let them know that they're looking for a serial number that you cannot find. If you're looking for RTs, truck cranes, uh, national products, this is the email you want to click on. And of course, lattice crawler products, you want to click on this email address and report it. Likewise, if you're looking for, um, if there is a drawing or a bill of material missing from a, from a given serial number, um, you would click here and you would report that to this US artwork request email address here. That's specific for missing drawings or bill of materials. Okay, let's do a quick dive into a couple products and I'll show you how to find parts and service information. So for this, I'm gonna search in the GRT product type. I'm gonna look at a GRT 655L and I'm just gonna pick the first serial number in the list. So you'll notice on some of the parts um, parts manual examples that I'm going to show you, you're going to see you're going to see uh, terms like capex parts manual or NPE parts manual or as built parts manual. Okay, so this is an indication of where the parts data came from. So in this example, in this GRT 655 serial number two three six one four four. The parts information is an exact copy of what came from the CapEx system. Um, for nationals, for example, it's very possible if you're looking at a national, if you're looking at a national crane manual, uh, it could say NPE parts manual. That's an indication that came from NPE, not CapEx. Um, as new cranes are built at the factory going forward, uh, you'll start to see the term as built parts manual. Uh, that's an indication that the parts manual has um, revisions, bill of material revisions in the parts manual that are specific to how and when the crane was built at that time. So um, most people probably don't realize this, but the CapEx system always shows the latest version of a bill of material. So if a bill of material is at revision D, for example, and your crane was built 10 years ago, and at that time the bill of material was at revision A, that crane built 10 years ago is going to show the latest version of a bill of material. It's always going to show the latest version. But as we build new cranes 
And as we add as built parts manuals into the system, um, those revision levels will never change. So you'll always have a view of that part of that parts manual as it was when it was built. OK, so this is where you would find the parts manual. This is where you would find the uh, the RPL and the belt and filter list. And down here is where you would find support manuals that come from the GTL system. So if you're looking for an electrical schematic or a load chart, for example, for a given machine, you always click down here and click on support manuals. And this will load up a list of support manuals, however many support manuals that have been loaded for that crane. So in this case, you've got uh, electric, hydraulic schematics, a load chart, an operator, parts and service manual. And you simply click on the link that you're looking at and that'll load up in a viewer. You'll also, once this loads up, you'll take, take notice that every document that, that, that you view has a stamp. And if you can see it right here in the center of the page, the serial number of the crane that you're looking at, which is indicated right here in the breadcrumb trail, will be stamped on every page of every document that you view, print, or download. So if you want to print this document, you simply click on the print or you click on download. And this serial number stamp will be on the printed page and it will also be on the downloaded page. You simply go back to the support manual list and you can open up additional documents if you want. I'm going to show you uh, a large list of support manuals and how to use the filtering function here in a few minutes. But we'll go back to this view so we can look at the actual parts manual. So this, if you've used CapEx before, you'll notice it's very similar structure, right? We've organized the information based on, you know, the part of the crane that the parts are located on. So we're going to look at for this example, we'll look at the superstructure cab. And here you'll notice there's a page, an area of the page for the drawing, um, an area of the page for the bill of material, and then our master navigate navigation list on the left hand side. Depending on how you uh, have your browser configured in terms of zoom percentage, it's very possible that when you open the Smart Equip site, it may look like this, where you see only the drawing. Or perhaps you see the parts list like this. So in order to see both the drawing and the parts list side by side, you simply have to change your zoom percentage and zoom out far enough to where you'll see both side by side, if you wish. If you want to keep it like this, you simply have to toggle back and forth between the parts list and the drawing to see them. I like to see both side by side, so I'm going to zoom back out so we see it like this. Now, you'll notice that on the navigation of the bill of materials, we can navigate using the left-hand side, or you can navigate using the hyperlink, the chain link icon right here. Either one works, either one takes you to the same location. You guys will not see the wrench icon, so don't uh, don't worry about that. That's just for select Manitowoc personnel. So. If there is a uh, if there is a link here, that means that that part number has a bill of material under it. You also notice that anything that has a bill of material under it is also bold, right? In terms of the text, so you have an indication that this part number is a bill of material both by the bold and by the link that's available here. But like I said, you can use this link or you can use this link over here. Either one takes you to the same location. Okay. Now I'm going to continue to drill down into this bill of material until I get to the bottom of the bill of material. Now I'm all the way down at the bottom of this uh, bill of material chain, and you can see by my my breadcrumb trail here, I can go back up to any level in this bill of material chain that I want to, and drill down into a different bill of material if I want. So the breadcrumb trail is a um, is a way for you to bounce back quickly to where you want to go. If I want to go all the way back to the top and go into the boom at this point, I can easily do that and drill back into the, the boom section now. Now, <clears throat> I want to say, for example, you want to order this, uh, this base weldment. You can simply click on that base weldment and it puts it into this, what I call a pre-cart selection area over here on the right-hand side. I want that, I want this wear strip, and I want this wear pad. Now you'll notice in the view 
that everything that I have selected in my pre cart is highlighted in blue. And it's also highlighted in blue on the on the image. You can select parts from the bill of material to put in your cart and you can select parts from the callouts on the drawing and put in your cart. When you hover over top of these callouts, you see the position on the bill of material, you see the part number and you see the description of the part. And if you want to order that part, you can simply click on it here as well. And that'll put that part in the cart. Okay. Now I have four parts in this cart from this GRT. I want to go back up to the top and I want to look at a GMK now. Now you notice here's a big list of GMK models. I'm going to pull up a GMK 5150L. I'm going to look at this serial number. And for the GMKs, we have um, the parts manual, interactive parts manual in English and in German. So we will pick the English version. And just like we see in GMK CapEx, we have the organization of the carrier, the superstructure, and the, and the different groups. We're going to go into the carrier. We're going to go into the chassis. And we're going to, just like we did in that GRT, we're going to navigate using these links, or we're going to navigate using the links over here in the bill of material. Either one will take us to the same place. So I'm just going to drill down to the bottom of this bill of material chain. And just like we saw earlier, we have our breadcrumb trail telling us where we are in the bill of material chain. And we have two parts and I want to order that plate. That plate is now in my pre cart. It is highlighted in blue on the bill of material and it's highlighted in blue on the drawing indicating um, or with the indicating that it's in my pre cart. In terms of the drawing itself, um, let me try to find real quick a. Um, try to find a multi-page drawing real quick okay so in terms of the drawing viewer you have a couple options here in terms of rotating the image or going to multiple pages right so um, if i want to look at page two you simply navigate from the pages if i want to rotate you use the rotation buttons if i want to print you can hit the print button the print button is going to open up a, a print reader in a in a new window. And there's a couple interesting features within this print viewer. Um, if you want to print only this image, you'll notice when I hover over top of these sections, you'll notice how this border shows up around the section. If I don't want this to be printed out, I can simply delete that section of the page to be printed. I can scroll down. Maybe I don't want the bill of material. I just want the image, right? And I don't want this section down here to be included. You'll notice also that there's a, um, a QR code on the page. Um, this is interesting because when you print this page, um, you can actually scan this QR code with your phone and it will open the Smart Equip system and take you directly to this page um, simply from scanning that QR code. So it's a very interesting feature that's uh, part of this new system. So not only can we order individual parts, but we can order assemblies as well, bill of materials, right? So I'm going to order this entire cover assembly and put that in my cart. Now I've got four parts from my GRT and I got a couple parts from this GMK in this working cart list. Again, I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to go into a national crane now. And I'm going to go into just any random model i'm going to pick uh, something old right so i'm going to look at a 400a and once that opens up i'll get a list of serial numbers and this should say npe right so if you recall from that grt example we saw capex parts manual which indicated the parts data came from capex this indicates npe so this tells us that came from the npe system so you'll notice if you use the NPE site, you'll notice a very similar structure to the data. And just like we've seen in prior examples, navigate from the left side or navigate from the links on the right side. Okay. Same deal, we can rotate single page drawing, so our page selector is not there, but we can choose from the illustration what we wanna order or choose from the bill of material. I'm gonna order Items seven and 13, these two pins. 
these two pins are now on my shopping cart. Okay. So no matter what product I go to, that shopping, that pre-shopping cart area retains those parts, no matter how many products I search for, no matter what I what I look at. Now, one thing to take note on the Manitowoc product side, um, there are no interactive parts manuals currently for the Manitowoc Lattice products. Um, You'll have to uh, browse the parts manuals just like you did in GTL. Um, so you would come down and look for, say, an MLC 300, pick a serial number. And you'll notice that there's no interactive parts data yet for the crawler cranes. This is just like you see in GTL. You'll have to open support manuals. And once the support manuals are open, you'll have to view the specific O numbers or parts pages. Um, that you're interested in in looking and you'll have to type the part numbers into the add items feature or into a spreadsheet and import the spreadsheet into the system which i'll show you how to do that here shortly uh, but you'll notice on some of the gmks and the the lattice crawler cranes there's a very large amount of support manuals um, a quick and easy way to filter the list is uh, based on what you're looking at. So if you go up here to the top and you're looking for, say, service information, just start typing and it'll automatically filter the list. If you're looking for a specific parts page or, or, or load chart, just type in the number and it'll filter that list automatically. As soon as you start to type, it'll automatically start to uh, filter the list. OK, so this filter is is your friend when you're looking at large amounts of uh, parts pages like we see on GMKs and on the Lattice product. OK, so <clears throat> this section of the page up here. OK, um, you can search by serial number, so you don't have to navigate to a specific serial number using this feature over here. Um, you can navigate to a given serial number uh, simply by typing it in. So if I type in 237375 and hit search, that's gonna take me immediately to that serial number, okay? If I type in 9991165, hopefully that's a good serial number, it's gonna take me directly to that serial number, regardless of what product I'm looking for, okay? You can also search by model or by serial number or by parts number rather. So in this example, I'm gonna search for a particular part number, okay? And it's gonna give me a prompt and it's gonna say, do you wanna find the part number in all parts manuals or do you wanna search for the part number in a specific model? I wanna search across all parts manuals, right? So if that part number I'm searching for is found in an RT manual. Whoop. That's actually. Hold on, let me let me find a part number here. So I'm just going to search for this part number right here. I'm going to go all the way back up and I'm going to change my search criteria. I'm going to search for this number. Search. Search. Now it's going to search for that part number across any brand, any model that it's found in. So you're going to get a big list here of all the different models and serial numbers that that's found in. And if I want to search in that particular serial number, I simply click on the serial number and it tells me where it's located in the manual. I click on it and it takes me directly to that parts list and will display it just like this. Now, right now, that filter, that search that I did, what it's doing, it's doing a filter within the bill of material that it's found in. So if I want to see the entire bill of material, I simply go up to the filter and delete the filter. And now I see all of the items in that particular bill of material. But that was the part number I searched for. And it was item one on that bill of material. Right. If I go and search for this part the same way. That'll show it to me, and it should take me to item seven of that bill of material rather than taking me to item one for the bill of material. 
So again, I'm searching across the wide group of models and serial numbers. That particular one is found in this install. That was actually item eight in this bill of material. It was item seven in the other bill of material, but it's item eight in this bill of material. Again, all I got to do is clear my filter and it's going to show me the entire bill of material. There it is at item eight in this bill of material. Okay, so that's a quick way to search for uh, part numbers. Um, you can also search for text, right? So if I'm searching for the word cylinder, so the word cylinder is obviously going to be found in a lot of machines. So I'm searching for text and not a number. So in that case, I have to click on the text option. And for text, we have to hone in on a specific model, right? So I'm going to just type in a model. I want to search in a 655L and I'm going to search for the word cylinder in that model. And it's going to give me every serial number that has the word cylinder in it. So I'm just going to search on this random serial number here. And here's the way it looks. This is uh, the search results, right? So you'll notice the top of the page here. We've got the components. And there are no items right now. The items are down below. So in the Smart Equip world, uh, component is the same as saying a bill of material. And the item is the same as saying the, you know, the part number within the bill of material. So I'm searching for the word cylinder, and that word cylinder is found in these top level bill of materials, but there, it's also found in these lower level items within the bill of material. So if I search for this one, if I click on that one, for example, that word cylinder is found, that word cylinder is found right here. Okay. If I go back to that same search and I search for at 655, now I, I want to search in one of the upper level bill of materials, not just the part itself within the bill of material. I want to search within this top level. Then this top level is going to load up and it's going to show me this word cylinder in this top level bill of material. But the, the, there might be an item within the bill of material that also says cylinder. But this is how you would search for text. You, ha you have to hone in on a specific um, model and then serial number. But just like we showed earlier with the navigation tree, we always have our breadcrumb trail. It tells us exactly where we are in the parts manual. And from here, we can click and go wherever we want. OK. So after all of that, take note that these parts are still setting here. We haven't done anything with them yet. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and add these parts to this cart. See this zero up here? This indicates there's currently no parts in this cart. As soon as I click on add to cart, this will be blank. And those parts will get moved up into this cart. OK, so that section is now blank and we now have 10 parts in that cart. If I click on that cart, I'm going to see those 10 parts displayed. Now I can add I can add additional parts to my cart. Simply by typing in them, typing them in rather than navigating to a parts manual. If I type in, if I hit the add items button and I start typing in part numbers, I can hit search and there it is. It's a plug. I'm going to type in another part number. Hit my enter key. That's a swivel joint. And I'm going to type in a third part number that actually has a letter in it to show you that it works with letters as well. That's a sensor. Now I can change my quantities that I want to order if I if I want to change them here or or I can wait until I get into my cart. Either one works. I'm going to add these to my cart. Okay, so now I've got the parts that I added from my parts manual, those 10 parts that I added from those three different products from my parts manual, and then I've got three parts that I added directly using the add items feature. Back to the add items feature, in addition to typing the parts in here, you can import, 
like a spreadsheet or a CSV file that has a large list of part numbers, you can import them simply by choosing this option and browsing to a network location where you have your, your CSV or Excel file, okay? The only issue with that is that it has to be a specific format. And the format looks like this, part number, comma, quantity. So when you choose a file and you have, say, 100 part numbers in an Excel file, make sure that your Excel file is formatted this way, part number, comma, quantity. So you can choose the file and upload it, or you can copy and paste from the file into this section right here. It just has to follow this format. Again, part number, comma, quantity. And you can add the items directly from this part. So I'm going to cancel and go back to my cart. Uh, one thing to take notice um, over here is a details button. Um, in some cases, if you click on the details button, there will be photographs for that part. Um, the warehouse in Jeffersonville is taking about 500 photographs a week of various part numbers, and we're loading them into the system. If I go back and I look at the sensor, um, if there are pictures, you will be able to see them under the details page. But this is only accessible, this detail button is only accessible from within your cart. If there are no pictures, this is what it will look like. It would just say this, there would, just, there would be no picture there visible. But if the pictures are available, simply click on details and you will see the picture if there are available. And in most cases, we have multiple pictures from multiple angles. And then in terms of your quantity, uh, you, this is, you know, you can change your quantities at this point or whatever you like. Okay. Now, once we connect this system to our ERP system, uh, this will replace GPX2 as well. So anybody on the call that has the ability to order parts from through GPX2, um, sometime at the end of March or early April, when that part of the project gets completed, um, we will grant access to specific people at each distributor uh, that has the ability to order parts. And within the cart, you will then see pricing availability. You'll see super session notes. You'll see signal codes. You'll see all the things that you see in GPX2 today prior to placing orders. And you'll be able to select parts and move those parts directly to an order. Um, so all of that functionality, once that's ready, we will have additional training on that uh, once, uh, once that's available. But this is where you would go. Your customers also have access to this cart. So they have access to all the same products that you have access to. There's no limitation to, uh, to any of the cranes. So it doesn't matter if you're a Manitowoc employee, a Manitowoc dealer, or a customer. Everybody has access to the same list of product types, brands, models and serial numbers. So it's conceivable that any customer could go and do just what I did, pick parts from a parts manual, put it in, into a shopping cart and export that shopping cart and email it to you. So it's very possible that you you will begin seeing shopping carts from the Smart Equip system come to you from your customers where you can then um, you know fulfill those orders directly out of your own inventory. Uh, a couple features of the cart. Um, we have a function here called manage cart. Okay. So you'll notice there's two different types of carts. There's a private cart and a shared cart. By default, when you create a new cart, you can name it whatever you want to name it. And by default, when you create that new cart, it will be a private cart and it will be, it will be empty. There will be no parts in it. So if I go back to my manage cart, I should now see a John Test 4 cart that's also private. But you also notice there's a, a number of shared carts here. So shared carts are available to any dealer, um, uh, like uh, Walter Payton Power, for example. Anybody within the Walter Payton Power organization that has access to the Smart Equip site will be able to see shared carts within that Walter Payton distributor. Um, Cowan Equipment personnel cannot see Walter Payton shared carts, and Walter Payton cannot see Cowan Equipment shared carts. So it's based on a company level. 
Uh, but anybody within said company will be able to see shared carts and will be able to open those carts and interact with them. Um, so let's see if we can find a shared cart with some part numbers. So here's one shared cart created by Tyler Page at Manitowoc, and I can open that, I can delete it, I can rename it, and I can copy or duplicate it. So I'm just gonna open it, and we'll see what that one single part number is in that cart. So there's a hoist assembly. There's the part number that's in that cart, okay? If I go back to manage carts, and I wanna go back to the big, um cart that i was working with these 13 part numbers that are currently private right if i want to open that i have to open that back up now you notice over here on the left hand side i have the option to share this cart now if i click that you're going to get a prompt that says this is an irreversible action are you sure you want to proceed if i say okay that's going to convert that private cart into a shared cart once that's done it cannot be reversed. It cannot be converted back into a private cart again. But by default, all new carts are private and then you share them if you wish. Okay. So that is essentially everything that I wanted to show everyone. Um, we went over how to add items simply by typing part numbers, by importing or cut and paste. Uh, we went over the uh, cart functionality, how to view carts, how to manage, edit carts. Um, and of course, we went over the navigation um, features of all the different products and brands that have been loaded both within the uh, parts manuals and within the support manuals. So at this point in time, I will take any questions that you may have. If you have questions, just Again, up here in the top right corner, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Hey, this is Christy with Maxim. Um, I did have a couple of questions. I've been following along on my side. So once you go into each of the models and you build your um, your potential cart before you add it to the big cart, how mm -hmm. can you get back to it without having to go back into some kind of other model? Like if I'm if I'm out of it and I'm at the base screen, I can't see that. I cannot see that cart. I have to go back into a model serial number and then it pops back up on the other side. OK, so help me follow along here. So you're in you're in a cart right now. No, Is that where you're no, at? We're, look, we're looking through parts books and we're adding, you know, we're clicking on it and we're adding and it, it's where it, it, it populates on the left hand side. OK, so I'm going to go in here and just pick a machine and we're going to add we're going to add a couple parts to my cart. This is what you've done so far. Yeah, right? so right here on the left, how do I see that without having to be in a model and getting it to here? Because I, I I built, you know, just like you did right here, and now I'm at the home screen. I can't find this cart unless I go back into a model serial number and get to a parts page. Yeah, that's is that the, the only, only way, way we can get to that. Yep, that's the only way you have to go back into something. Um, there's no way to get back into that pre-cart, whatever you want to call it. Um, you have to go back into any any model or serial number but you, yeah, yeah, you that's have to I, go back okay. yep okay you have to go back um and then also oh, and is anyone if you share your cart is anyone able to delete it or is it only the creator yes once it's shared okay so i'm going to go manage carts so these are all shared carts created by different people at manitowoc i do have the ability to delete even though i did not create this cart I can delete it. And that deletes it for everybody. That deletes it for everybody. And then my last question, and I'm done. When you're adding from the uh, parts books, is it always going to have the quantity that is suggested or um, that's li listed in the parts book, whether it's two of these O-rings or one, and then you just have yes. to always adjust it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Every parts manual will have um, the the quantity based on what's required on the crane. So regardless of what part number I get into, it's just drill into a bill of material here, right? So you got quantities of one, four, 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 right? Two. So this is based on the parts manual. Uh, put that in here, add my cart. Now it came from the parts manual with quantity of four. But if I go up to my cart now and look at that part number, which is this part number right here, quantity of four, 
this is where I can adjust it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Ninety four people. Few questions. And I'm the only one with the big mouth. Come on, y'all. <laughs> well, I must I must have done a good job. So no, I have what? a question. <laughs> yes. What would be a scenario in which you were sharing a cart? Like yeah, so so customer customer calls you and says, hey, you know, I've got this crane. I've got um, uh, a list of parts I'm doing some work on. Um, I'm just checking on price and availability, right? Not ready to order yet. Um, but say it's a big list of parts, maybe 20 part numbers. Um, you go through the effort of typing the part numbers in, adding them into the cart. Um, once we connect this to our... Um, our ERP system, and you can check price and availability. Um, you've created that cart, and you're going to save it and hold it, but the customer is not ready to place the order yet. Um, you have vacation scheduled next week, and, and it's a Friday, right? So you create a shared cart. Um, now, customer comes back in the following Tuesday and is ready to order the parts. Um, your colleague can now open that shared cart, uh, cart and uh, convert it into a, an order. Ten four. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, do you have an example of what it looks like for a part that has been superseded? Uh, not okay. yet. Um, okay. Yeah, not yet. I mean, I do. I have that in in a different environment. I mean, I would have to go over here and open up our our testing environment that we're currently working on. Um, okay. I really don't want to, I don't want to show that right now because that functionality is not fully developed yet. Okay. Um, but it will show right here in this view uh, in your cart. Um, so if <clears throat> there are, there, there will be different roles that will grant to certain people. Uh, the majority of people, right, will have the same role that I'm displaying now. So that means that they'll see the parts, They'll you know, be able to see the description. They'll be able to export a cart, but they won't see price and availability. That will be uh, limited to certain people within uh, the dealers that have the roles today, that have GPX2 access today, that mm -hmm. can order parts. Customers, no customers will be able to see price and availability. Um, they will only see what I'm displaying here. But if you are a person that has access to GPX2 today, when we um, convert um, or when we complete our our project to connect this system to our ERP system and GPX2 goes away, you will come into your cart and this view will be expanded quite substantially, right? You'll see all of the super session notes. You'll see um, quite a bit of additional information about the parts. Uh, very, very similar to what you see in GPX2 to, today. Hey, John, if... Yep. Uh, if I the the QR code that you were showing earlier, if I send that to someone, can they access whatever is on the QR code without a Metamorph Direct uh, login? No, uh, they would. They still need to have a login um, to manage Walk Direct, and they still need to have access to Smart Equip. Um, the Smart Equip site is a secure site, right? So the only way to get here is to have a Manitowoc Direct account and to be configured so that Smart Equip is in your list. Um, if they have access to Smart Equip, then obviously the QR code is a big advantage, so you don't have to you know, tell them um, where in the parts manual you found that illustration. Um, they simply scan the QR code and it takes them right to it, but they do have to have a Manitowoc Direct account and they have to have access to Smart Equip already to access okay. it. Now, like I said earlier at the beginning of the call, I have a very large list of customer and dealer users um, that you know, basically anybody within the last year that has accessed Manitowoc Direct and has accessed either CapEx or GTL or NPE or any of those systems that this system replaces, whether they be customer or dealer, I've got their information. And we are proactively loading that information into our system so that um, Smart Equip will automatically show up in your application list, whether you're a dealer or a customer. So hopefully we'll catch, like I said, it's about 5,000 people worldwide. Hopefully 
we will catch the vast majority of people that need access to smart equip um, we'll proactively add them so that one day you log into Manitowoc Direct, Smart Equip will just automatically show up there for you. Yeah, I got it. I was just thinking the the, the big advantage that I could think of with the QR code would be on the, the tech side, sending yep. them that. And yep, for sure. Most people aren't going to have their mechanics with direct access, I wouldn't think. Uh, or, you know, a select few anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Other questions? This will be able to go over different uh, platforms uh, other than Microsoft. Yes, yes. Uh, so this is a uh, does not matter what web browser you're using. Uh, it works on Edge. It works on Chrome. It works on Firefox. Um, it is a true um, mobile friendly website, which means it will automatically scale the page uh, based on the device you're looking at, uh, whether it be smartphone, tablet, laptop. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it works on literally every platform. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, I will let everybody go. Um, like I said, appreciate it. Um, I will uh, I will share this recording that um, so that you guys can share with your colleagues um, in the meeting invitation. I did include the um, the help document, but if you uh, if you deleted the invitation or lost it or whatever, uh, just remember the tools help will open up that help document, and that essentially will cover everything that I've covered here today. So, if there are no other questions, I appreciate your time, and I will let everyone go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Jen.